Ladies and gentlemen, when you go to the jury room, the first thing you should do is choose a presiding juror. The presiding juror should see to it that your discussions are orderly and that everyone has a fair chance to be heard. It is your duty to talk with one another in the jury room and to consider the views of all the jurors. Each of you must decide the case for yourself, but only after you have considered the evidence with the other members of the jury. Feel free to change your mind if you are convinced that your position should be different. You should all try to agree, but do not give up your honest beliefs just because the others think differently. Please do not state your opinions too strongly at the beginning of your deliberations, or immediately announce how you plan to vote, as it may interfere with an open discussion. Keep an open mind so that you and your fellow jurors can easily share ideas about the case. You should use your common sense, but do not use or consider any special training or unique personal experience that any of you have in matters involved in this case. Your training or experience is not a part of the evidence received in the case. Sometimes jurors disagree or have questions about the evidence or about what the witnesses said in their testimony. If that happens, you may ask to have testimony read back to you or ask to see any exhibits admitted into evidence that you have not already been or that has not already been provided to you. Also, jurors may need further explanation about the laws that apply to the case. If this happens during your discussions, write down your questions and give them to the court attendant. I will talk with the attorneys before I answer, so it may take some time. You should consider your deliberations while you wait for my answer. I will do my best to them. When you write me a note, do not tell me how you voted on an issue until I ask for this information in open court. At least nine jurors must agree on a verdict. When you have finished filling out the form, your presiding juror must write down the date and sign it at the bottom, and then notify the court attendant that you are ready to present your verdict in the courtroom. Your decision must be based on your personal evaluation of the evidence presented in the case. Each of you may be asked in open court how you voted on each question. While I know you would not do this, I am required to advise you that you must not base your decision on chance, such as the flip of a coin. If you decide to award damages, you may not agree in advance to simply add up the amounts each juror thinks is right, and then without further deliberations, make the average your verdict. You may take breaks, but do not discuss this case with anyone, including each other, until all of you are back in the jury room. If you have taken notes during the trial, you may take your notebooks with you into the jury room. You may use your notes only to help you remember what happened during the trial. Your independent recollection of the evidence should govern your verdict. You should not allow yourself to be influenced by the notes of other jurors if those notes differ from what you remember. At the end of the trial, your notes will be collected and destroyed. You may request in writing that trial testimony be read to you. I will have the court reporter read the testimony to you. You may request that all or a part of a witness's testimony be read. Your request should be as specific as possible. It will be helpful if you can state, one, the name of the witness, two, the subject of the testimony you would like to have read, and three, the name of the attorney or attorneys asking the questions when the testimony was given. The court reporter is not permitted to talk with you when he or she is reading the testimony you have requested. While the court reporter is reading the testimony, you may not deliberate or discuss the case. You may not ask the court reporter to read testimony that was not specifically mentioned in a written request. If your notes differ from the testimony, you must accept the court reporter, reporter's accurate, or record as accurate. I will give you a verdict form with questions you must answer. I have already instructed you on the law that you are to use in answering these questions. You must follow my instructions and the forms carefully. You must consider each question separately. Although you may discuss the evidence and the issues to be decided in any order, you must answer the questions on the verdict form in the order they appear. After you answer a question, the form tells you what to do next. All 12 of you must deliberate on and answer each question. At least nine of you must agree on an answer before all of you can move on to the next question. However, the same nine or more people do not have to agree on each answer. When you have finished filling out the forms, your presiding juror must write the date and sign it at the bottom and then notify the court attendant that you are ready to present your verdict in the courtroom. After your verdict is read in open court, you may be asked individually to indicate whether the verdict expresses your personal view. This is referred to as polling the jury and is done to ensure that at least nine jurors have agreed to each decision. The verdict form that you will receive asks you to answer several questions. 
you must vote separately on each question. Although nine or more jurors must agree on each answer, it does not have to be the same nine for each answer. Therefore, it is important for each of you to remember how you have voted on each question so that, that if the jury is polled, each of you will be able to answer accurately about how you voted. Each of you will be provided a draft copy of the verdict form for your use in keeping track of your votes. A sound or video recording has been admitted into evidence and a transcript of the recording has been provided to you. The recording itself is the evidence. The transcript may not be completely accurate. It may contain errors, omissions, or notations of inaudible portions of the recording. Therefore, you should use the transcript only as a guide <coughs> Therefore, you should use the transcript only as a guide to help you in following along <coughs> with the recording. If there is a discrepancy between your understanding of the recording and the transcript, your understanding of the recording must prevail. During the trial, materials have been shown to you to help explain testimony or other evidence in the case. Some of these materials have been admitted into evidence and you will be able to review them during your deliberations. Other materials have also been shown to you during the trial, but have not been admitted into evidence. You will be able to review them during your deliberations <coughs> because they are not themselves evidence or proof of any facts. You may, however, consider the testimony given in connection with these materials. As alternate jurors, you are bound by the same rules that govern the conduct of the jurors who are sitting on the panel. You should not form or express any opinion about the case until after you have been substituted in for one of the deliberating jurors on the panel or until the jury has been discharged. Okay. Clerk, where are the bailiffs? Okay, thank you. What I need you to do is follow the deputies and the clerk back to Department 28 because that's where you're going to be deliberating. And the alternates, we're going to send you to a different place, but you'll have a separate group of deputies who will take you there. Okay? So back to Department 28. Thank you. Oh, all the alternates? Well, yes, but generally it's concerning two specifically. Right. Okay, well, all right. Well, State your stipulation. That council agreed that if an alternate have some other engagement that they can be free to go do or attend to the business that they have to, that the regular jury can continue to deliberate, and that if a uh, problem arises where an alternate has to be called in, then the jury would stop, and depending on the alternate's whereabouts or schedule, things would stop until that alternate was able to come back, and then the jury could begin uh, deliberation. And if that alternate cannot return, then what? Then the alternate, I presume, would be excused, Your Honor, no at that point. 
then we'll deal with it? Exactly. We'll deal with that if it happens. Okay. All right. So stipulated? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I think we need a who makes the decision about whether an engagement is such that the alternate can. I, I think we have a discussion about that separately <laughs> if we need to. I think right now we know that there are two, well, I don't want to state their names, but it's been given to us on the courtroom calendar as to who the two that this applies to at this time. If something else comes up, we can certainly. Yeah, if there's a dispute about it, you can always address me. But basically, that, that's the outline of the stipulation. Agreed? Yes, sir. Okay. Are you all going to come to Department 28 or go your way and we'll call you if something happens? We're going to be getting calls for readbacks or a verdict. We're happy to come to Department 28 if there's anything for us. Okay. To Did you? Yes. All the information. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.